Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Vikings Now. Jim Rich here, along with Pierre Nujum, who is not here. <laughs> Do you believe he did not show? <laughs> he is here every week, belly aching, how he doesn't get enough time to talk and share his viewpoints. Instead, he blows us off. So it's Ahmad Hicks and myself. <laughs> um, what an intro. I know. Well, I mean, because he's always sitting on the end, and mm -hmm. now he elected not to show. Yeah. So should we critique Pierre's per past performances in podcasts, or do you want to talk about a 3 nothing victory? Let's talk about a 3 nothing victory. All right. I'm sure Pierre would pre appreciate that. All right. <laughs> uh, the Vikings come away with the win, as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's not how, it's how many. Yeah. Uh, had they lost this game, think of where Viking fans would be today. They I would know. be calling for heads. They would be mm -hmm. wanting the franchise uh, – taken down they they would have been <laughs> besides themselves but they have the win to give them some solace but still uh where do you go after this back to the drawing board back to the drawing board back to the practice field back to the meeting rooms and you got to figure this thing out because you're way you're in way too deep now to just pull out and just be like all right let's start fresh let's let's do something else you know they're in too deep for that so right now Kevin O'Connell the rest of his offensive staff they're getting together they're figuring out how Nick Mullins can improve and be the best quarterback that he So you're can saying be Nick forward. Mullins Absolutely. is the guy Saturday. There's no chance they trot Josh Dobbs back out there. Look, love the guy. You know, class first class guy, class hack to be around, super humble, super positive uh locker room guy. He is what you want in a quarterback, but not on the field with this team right now. And there's no knock to him. He just got here, what, six, seven weeks ago. Like, you're not going to Not just, even. Yeah, not even that. So it's like you're not going to step in and just go to the bar that, that – you know, where Kirk Cousins said, you know, you're, you're going to have some growing pains. And that's exactly what we're experiencing right now. Right now, they have to go back to the quarterback that knows the system, understands the system. Yeah, his arm talent may be limited. Yeah, his mobility may be limited, especially in comparison to Josh Dobbs or Jaron Hall. But he gives this team a chance because he knows the playbook. And in order to succeed in, in the NFL and play quarterback, you have to have that vision, that trust to say, hey, you know what? I know this is going to be a tight play, but I'm still going to make this throw. I'm going to fit that ball in there. You have to be a risk taker. And sometimes I think what we've been seeing with Josh Jobs is sometimes he wants to take care of the football so much where he's like, all right, well, my well, read's not open. I got to get out of here. Right. Again. Well, you, you knew that they drilled it in his head. Whatever you do, do not turn it over. Right. I mean, you could see yesterday when he was about to get sacked, mm -hmm. both hands right. were on the ball. Right. He was like a kid when you were trying to punch it out of your QB neighborhood. Like <laughs> it's hard to play QB like that. The great quarterbacks in this league are the ones who are risk takers. They're gunslingers. Yes, they make a lot of mistakes, but they're not afraid to make a mistake. And when, sometimes when you make those type of throws, those are the ones that we end up talking about and being being celebrated you know for a long time coming so it quarterback is you know just a tough position to play but I ultimately think that the team has to move on from Josh Dobbs not because he's terrible but just because he doesn't know the playbook he, he's not comfortable back there yet and you're it's too late in the season to keep giving him opportunities you got to go with then, somebody that gives you a chance to win then why did O'Connell go with him coming out of the bye look he I mean he had four games yeah. to size up this kid and figure out, and he's not a kid. He's almost oh, 27, 28 yeah. years old. So he's been around the league, as we've seen by his resume. He's been in a lot of different places. But this always seems to be the ceiling that he hits, mm -hmm. right? He shows you flashes. You see all these raw material mm -hmm. here with Dobbs. And you're like, wow, this guy is lightning fast. Right. He's got a decent arm. He's got a brain in his head. He's a rocket scientist. Mm -hmm. So every coach and every offensive coordinator look at this and say, holy buckets, I can build a great quarterback out of all these pieces. Yeah. But for some reason, you get it to a point, and then it just falls back down to the house of cards. Well, I think it all boils down to this. Josh Dobbs, no knock to him, no shade. He was a backup quarterback for a reason. Backup right. quarterbacks in the NFL are not meant to step in and lead your team to 16 through 16, 17 game schedules and come out vict on the victorious end of things. If, yeah, if we, it, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks that have been temporary success back, though with backups, with and yeah. then all of a sudden they they figured it out. But it's only a handful of guys that have done that that really step in and be like, oh man, they just played themselves into a starting role, a multi million dollar contract. Now they're the face of a team. Very few quarterbacks come in and do that. For 
from the backup position role. Backup quarterbacks are meant to just keep your team afloat. Give your give yourselves a chance to win. Mullins and is the perfect example. Exactly. And Nick Mullins looked impressive during the preseason. Everyone was talking about, wow, he's moving the ball. You know, he's moving the team down the field. He's confident out there. But he never got a chance to showcase that this year when Kirk Cousins went down because he was already right. hurt. He was hurt. And what you hate to see, guys, it happens all the time in the NFL. Guys lose their job because they're not available. And as I've said before, as a defensive back coach told me before, your best ability is availability. And where you're not available in the National Football League, you're not able to help your team. Now Nick Mullins is able to help his team. And here's where I think Kevin O'Connell and them can fall back on. If it doesn't work with Nick Mullins, you still got another quarterback in Jaron Hall to make it work. And if it doesn't work with him, then you're like, oh, well, we got a security blanket in Josh Dobbs. And that's what Josh Dobbs was. He was a security blanket. He was brought in just in case something happened to Jaron Hall. Mm -hmm. Something did happen to Jaron Hall. He came in, gave you two wins, he gave you two losses. But you're like, all right, he just had the entire town buzzing, the whole National Football League. He was the header on NFL background on Twitter or right. X. Yeah. So it's like yep. you just don't say, hey, thanks for those two wins. Thanks for those exciting moments. You're done. We don't need you anymore. You're going to our third-string quarterback role. He had to give him another opportunity, especially with Jefferson returning. He went out there. He didn't capitalize on that opportunity. Now is when you make a change. I, I guess, but, you know, it, you're in it to win this, mm -hmm. right? Be, if the Raiders had any sort of an offense, right. the Vikings would have been easily defeated yesterday. Sure. So O'Connell's not sitting there, geez, I, I don't need to burst Josh's bubble and mm -hmm. not give him another start. He legitimately thought, that Dobbs was his best chance to win I against we, the Raiders. I think we all did because it's like, all right, you just take that. If Josh Dobbs could just throw the ball on time and just trust his reads and get the ball where it's supposed to be, just like Nick Mullins can do, plus you add in the factor of him running, well, he has a slight edge over Nick Mullins. But what we saw yesterday was he can't make – well, I can't. I won't say he can't make no. those reads. I think he's, he's making those reads. But he's, he's not, not comfortable, comfortable in enough, letting yeah. the ball go and yes. trusting his reads. And even on the one with Justin Jefferson, he was a tad late, and he was really high with that football. If you're just comfortable in your routine, your drop back, you drop back, you let it fly, it hits him in the numbers. He's not there yet. So I think that's why now this offense may take a step back now. Not to say that Nick Mullins is bad. Yes, he can move the team down the field, but he's not going to be a guy that it's going to extend the play like Josh Dobbs or Jaron Hall could. So that kind of limits what they can do offensively. So if Nick Mullins can't just shred you in the pocket, where now you're like, where's the running game going to come from now? Because the running game somewhat opened up this past week due to the fact that the teams had to honor the, right. the threat of the Josh spy, Dobbs running. Spy on exactly. And so I think that now it gives defenses a chance to kind of say, hey, we're going to like – tee off on the quarterback a little bit more now because Nick Mullins is not going to escape the right. pocket, especially and with the offensive line. And if he does, he's line. not going anywhere. <laughs> and now with the offensive line dinged up, you're talking about, like, a lot of pressure coming Nick Mullins' way in the future. So, you know, Josh Dobbs helped alleviate some of that, but now that he may not be playing this week, Nick Mullins is going to have to figure out a lot at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. And I'll tell you, the one person that's smiling throughout this all is Kirk Cousins' agent. Yeah. Because yeah. – we said it. We said it earlier – when Josh Dobbs is having that success, no one's more frustrated than Kirk Cousins because you, the last thing you want to see is your backup come in and have more success than you because now it opens up Pandora's box of, oh, we're good without Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to move on. Now he's like, hmm, what were you guys saying? <laughs> it's, it's not so easy as I made it look the last couple of years. So I think what it does is it just gives the team help, a, a new perspective on things like, all right, are we investing that money in Kirk? We see what happens when we don't have a guy, or do we need to go find a guy this offseason where maybe he doesn't command $30-plus plus million like Kirk may command but still is a little bit better than Dobbs and Mullins? And now we're right back to that same quandary because you have the NFL's best receiver on your roster. Yeah. And if you're going to take a step back at that quarterback position, I don't think Justin is too happy with how it played out yesterday when he didn't have somebody put the ball exactly where he needs it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you talk about the quarterback's ability to throw people open. You've gotten a taste of what that means the last couple of weeks because when Cousins would deliver the balls when he was on, it would be right past a defensive back's ear and right into the hands of his receiver. Dobbs has to see you there. Kirk knows mm -hmm. you're going to get there and will throw to a spot. We don't see that with Dobbs. He throws it at you as opposed to 
throwing sure. you open. Yeah. Do, you, do you read it that way? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you watch Josh Dobbs and you watch a lot of young quarterbacks, especially college football recently, a lot of guys, they want to see their receiver open. And when I say open, I mean wide open, <laughs> like nobody coming around. Okay, now I can let it fly. Whereas the elite quarterbacks, the, the very talented quarterbacks, they're dropping back knowing there's going to be a qu- – there's going to be a linebacker here at this level. There's going to be a safety over the top. I'm going to thread this, you know, pin through a needle, and we're going to make it work, you know. And that's the elite level quarterback play. But you don't make throws like that without going through the fire for multiple seasons. Like right. we've seen the Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allens, the well, Kirk That's why I'm thinking yeah. O'Connell is expecting way more sure. out of Dobbs than he's really capable. And I kind of circle back to Kevin making this such a mess yesterday. You know. <laughs> yeah. Then You know what? Okay. That's fine if you wanted to go with Dobbs yeah. and see what he could do. But where was the leash? I mean, why wait until the fourth quarter? You saw enough in that first half saying, like, oh, this, this isn't going to work. I'm getting people killed out here. Mm-hmm. My line is falling apart. I, I, the I only reason you kept that something. leash is because the defense kept them in the game and right. because they had, still had the ability to run the football. Uh, balance, pretty balanced yesterday with that. Even C.J. Ham got in and got yeah. a nice carry. I'm well, like, he had oh, to what? after yeah. Madison went yeah, down. I was like, what is this? But, I mean, I think that's the only, ro- only reason why. The defense. The defense gave him the flexibility to, to keep Josh Dobbs in there and to keep hope alive with him. And then it was like, all right, we don't have anything going. We got to <laughs> make a change. And I think that's why we saw the change so late in the game. Because the last thing you want to do is just, you know, like, I know it's the NFL. It's what what have you done for me lately business, mm-hmm. and it's a yep. business. So it's like there's yep. not a lot of feelings being factored in when decisions like that are being made. But you don't want to go up to a quarterback that you may have to rely on in the future and take him out the game. You get a situation like Zach Wilson, and you, you start him, then you bench him, and then he doesn't want to go in and be the starting quarterback. Yep. And then he goes in and has a good week because he says, well, what are they going to do if I play bad? I'm just going to let it fly. They're going to bench me. Who cares? Like, And so you don't – want a quarterback to have that mentality you want him to have some of that dog-like mentality in him but not the f it i'm just gonna do whatever like that's not a good recipe for success with your starting quarterback yeah and so i like like we say though you're not gonna get that play from josh dobbs or jaron hall or nick mullins until they've just been there long enough to say, you know what, I'm going to make something happen. They're not that comfortable doing that yet. They're, they want to s- stay in the game. Don't turn the ball over. Give this team a chance to win because the playoffs are on the horizon. Yeah, all right. Uh, a number of injuries came out of Sunday's game. And now not all these players are out for Saturday. But if one of these guys is out, which do you think would be the most Brian devastating O'Neal. to the Vikings? I, 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 Brian O'Neill. Alexander. Brian O'Neill. Jefferson. Brian O'Neill. <laughs> Brian O'Neill. Uh, Dalton Brian Reisner. O'Neal. Now, I think Dalton Reisner will be okay, but Brian O'Neill, he's in a walking boot after the game. Like, this is you're talking about an offensive line that hasn't been that. They they've shown flashes throughout this season where they could be really good and really dominant, but they've also put a lot of tape on film where they're like, man, they're not really good. And you're talking about Brian O'Neill being being down now, and now Nick Mullins when he drops back, you're talking about somebody right in his face, you know, on the right side. So before he could take a five step drop, look down the field to see if Justin Jefferson won on his double move, he's probably going to have to be eyeing down a defensive end who's going up against a backup right tackle. That's the most dangerous position right now, especially with the playoffs looming, because you have to be able to control the football. You have to be able to control the line of scrimmage and be able to run the ball effectively and control the time of possession Mm -hmm. in these games moving forward. With dinged up offensive linemen, that is a recipe for disaster with a young quarterback or an inexperienced quarterback like Nick Mullen. So, Brian O'Neill, forget the running back position. You can plug anybody in there and do what the Vikings have been doing all season long. Their run game is not phenomenal. It's been subpar all season long. You can get subpar play from anybody. But if you have a dinged up offensive line, you can't do anything offensively or get the ball to Justin Jefferson. So <laughs> that's the big problem. I think J.J. will be back, though. No all right. All right. Uh, let's talk about this defense. Um, Bravo, Brian. Was it the Raiders' ineptness, or was it Flores' system that made them look Mi- so inept mixture, yesterday? Mixture, mixture of both. Aiden O'Connell is bad. Jimmy Garoppolo was bad. That's why he got <laughs> oh, They didn't even the, give him in man, their shot. That, 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 How did I put him in there? Their quarterback play was bad. Really, really bad. They got a lot of weapons in Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs. But when you can, when you can't get the guys the ball, when you can't block guys up front, you're not going to have much success. And what we've seen all year long, Brian Flores is feasting on young yes. quarterbacks, yes. inexperienced quarterbacks. 
the last play of the game defensively for the Vikings. Ivan Pace Jr. is on the line of scrimmage on Aiden O'Connell's right side. At the snap of the ball, he was in Devontae Adams' way, like literally looking like he's like, all right, where are you, Devontae Adams? Like, I'm <laughs> playing your passing lane. Wherever you go, I'm going. And Aiden O'Connell, as soon as he dropped back, he looked left. So he's not even seeing Pace go over there and drift into that passing lane. That's all Brian Flores. That's not Ivan Pace saying, I'm going to go from this left side of the defensive side and go over to the right to go play Devontae Adams and go double him. No, that's Brian Flores drawing it up that way. That's what he's been doing all year long. Last season, what we saw with Ed Donatel was forcing players to play to his scheme, regardless if it worked or not, regardless right. whether if you they had were given the up 350 yards. Right. Yeah. If you, whether you had the ability to do it or not, this exactly. is what you had to do. And what you see in good coaches and what we're seeing in Brian Flores, they don't force players to play to their system. They play to their players' strengths, and that's what he's doing. We all saw it at the beginning of the season when the Vikings kept six safeties. Everyone's like, what are they doing? But everyone knows when you have a really good safety like Josh Metellus or Theo Jackson, they're your Swiss Army knife. They can go play linebacker. They can go play safety. They can maybe play a little corner, a little man-to-man coverage and stuff like that. So what he do- what he's doing was he got the most athletic pieces on the field. He said, and I'm going to put them in place to go make – put them in position to go make plays, and that's what we've been saying. Ivan Pace Jr., undrafted rookie, coming in and saving the day at the end of the game. I mean, just hats off to uh, Brian Flores. You think about what he is pumping into Pace's head. For sure. Right? He had 13 tackles yesterday. Jordan Hicks isn't around. Hicks was supposed to be the brains of the offense, or the defense, rather. And instead, Pace has got all this going on, and still he's made 13 tackles, has an interception, uh, I think he recovered a fumble as well in that game. He's the game. extension of beef flow. I mean, look at this defense, though. Outside of Byron Murphy Jr. and Harrison Smith, like in the secondary, there's not one guy where you're looking on paper. You're like, that's our guy. He's the lockdown guy. He's taking away whoever the opposing team's best wide receiver is. No one is saying that when you look at this Minnesota Vikings roster. And the fact that Coach Flores has this defensive unit, a top 10 unit in the top national five down top five, some categories. that speaks volumes to what he's doing. And I think after the season, everyone's going to be coming after him and vying for his talents because of what he's consistently done no matter where he's gone, whether it's Miami, New England. And now here, he just consistently makes plays and puts his defenses in positions to excel. So hats off to him. He's the reason that the Vikings won that game yesterday. Oh, Absolutely. No doubt about it. All right, so where are we going from here? Uh, they're sitting in a playoff spot. This is being taped before the Green Bay game, so we don't know where they are, but more than likely they'll take care of the Giants tonight, or they should anyways. Uh, can this team remain a playoff team? You have Can't, after, right. Yep. give it to you, Cincinnati, Detroit, Green Bay, Detroit, and Can't, then you're done. Can they be a playoff team? My question would be, can they find a quarterback? Somebody <laughs> that they can just go all in on and say, this is our guy the last four weeks of the Should have went with Flacco. I mean, now everybody's going to say you know, that. Uh, I, that's my thing. They, they, can they can they establish an identity offensively? Because defense, we know what it is. They're a bend but don't break unit. They say, hey, you just give us a chance to go out here and go make plays and win. We're going to go do that. All right, so this defense says – Offense, just give us a chance. So it's all about the offense moving forward. Can they establish an identity? I think right now they're putting way too much pressure on this defense. And when this defense goes up against right. a good team with a lot of weapons, if you're putting them on the field consistently, like right. the offense did the past couple of weeks, this defense is not going to be able to uphold against a team like the Lions so with all the firepower. Exactly. So I think the offense has to establish an identity, whatever it is moving forward. Got to get a quarterback in there. Got to get somebody that's confident. Because if they don't, if they're not confident in their play, this offense won't be confident, and we're going to be talking about either a first-round playoff loss or how they slipped and lost their playoff spot in the last four weeks. A lot of teams where they get into a bind offensively, they go to the run game. Mm-hmm. The Vikings can't do that. They haven't been able to all year. So how do they? You're not doing it try, at this point. Try to figure. You're not doing it at this point of the year. It's way too late. It, it, that's your identity right now. You can't run the ball. You're not going to be able to run the ball. There's no there's no magic formula where you're going to be like, all right, well, it just clicked. We're going to be able to do it. If you haven't been able to do it, you're not going to be able to do it. They have lived and died by the passing game this year. So Kevin O'Connell is going to have to get to work and show why he's worth all that money he's getting paid. He has to come up with a game plan that's just going to get the ball 
ball out of Nick Mullins' hand until Jordan Addison, K.J. Osborne, Justin Jefferson, and Hawkinson let them go make plays. You know, you, But the running game is going to be non, non-existent. You're going to get less than 100 yards every game moving forward, especially if you take out Josh Dobbs yes. and his ability to run. So fans, don't even worry about the running game. Alexander <laughs> Madison, great guy. He's not going over 100 yards for the rest of the season probably. It's going to all rely on Nick Mullins, that passing game, and Kevin O'Connell. Did you even miss Pierre? No, nah, not not today. We're this, good. This is this we're is good. this is kind of good. I, we're, we're you know, good. I, I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't have any optimism time. right now for this team and oh, this offense. Though. He, he, he would just would have been. Right oh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> would have been all sour. Oh my God, this guy's got to go. Blow yeah. it up. I still think they just have a get chance. It out here. I still think they have a chance. When I talk to guys, they're still confident. You know, that win definitely gave them a little juice. But honestly, when you look at the rest of the NFL. You got to look, well, right. look at the Eagles. All yeah. of a sudden, they look like Super Bowl champs. Now they, you know, are, are coming apart at the seams. You just got to ask yourself, can this team beat the 49ers again? They don't have Kirk Cousins. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like this is not the same right. team that beat the 49ers the first time. And the 49ers are playing a lot different and a lot mm-hmm. better football than when they played the Minnesota Vikings. So you have to look. The, the, the NFC runs through San Francisco and right now, or Dallas for that matter, and you're like, can the Vikings compete with either of these teams? And the answer is no, because those teams have defenses to stack up with the Vikings' defense. Exactly. The Vikings don't have offenses to stack up like them without Kirk Cousins. No, it'll be interesting to see where it all goes. Thanks for listening. I'm sure a lot of Pierre's fans, what, five, six, <laughs> seven of them, are very upset that he didn't make it. Maybe he'll just uh, do his own podcast and – We could post that for you as well. (laughs) He'll teleport. He'll be here for the next podcast, that's for sure. All right. uh, You found us this way, Mm -hmm. but where else does this show stack uh, up? Fox9.com. Go to our YouTube channel uh, as well. And then make sure you can look for us on what? Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Like, follow, subscribe, comment. Let's go comment. We read the comments. So if you want to rip me, go ahead. Don't rip him out. He's too too nice a guy. We can take it. No, don't don't take shots at him. (laughs) Just point them all at me. Because Pierre's not here. Because usually he's the one that does get most of them. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Vikings Now. Thank you so much for hanging with us, and we will see you after the Bengals game. And uh, check us out on our newscasts, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10, all on Fox 9.